Well, welcome back to the Connect Church Discipleship Podcast. We're in season two, episode 17. This season, we're talking about ordinances and disciplines that we find in the life of a disciple of Christ. And we've been in a series on stewardship. We're wrapping it up today. Uh, thank you, Ken and Carlton. This is the fifth back to back to back to back to back to back uh, that we got here. And uh, you guys have been champs, so I appreciate that. Uh, we've been looking at stewarding our time, our talent, and lastly, our treasure. And just to remind us, the focus of this is we want to abide in Christ. And being generous in these areas is actually a way to abide with the Lord. It's a spiritual discipline for us. Um, last time we looked at what does tithing and giving look like in the Old Testament. Today we want to kind of see the New Testament. But just to recap, uh, we looked at Abraham Melchizedek and Jacob as examples of tithing. Uh, and then the tithes that were listed out in the law. And we saw that it came to about 23%. Uh, that they were giving. And so we talked about how do we become more generous uh, within within our lives. And so what does the New Testament kind of give us in terms of giving? And so we're going to read a little bit of that. Uh, Ken, would you start uh, with Matthew 23, verses, verse 23? Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the, the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. All right. So Jesus affirms that, hey, you guys are tithing. Like, that's great. Like, that's awesome. But he says it goes beyond that, right? Your giving and your generosity should also extend to justice and mercy and faithfulness. Um, Jesus always framed the commandments through loving God and loving others. And so even the idea of giving, it, yes, it's loving God, but it should extend to loving others as well. And again, those areas of justice, mercy, and faithfulness. Um, one time, Jesus spent uh, with a tax collector named Zacchaeus. And I don't know if you guys grew up with the song uh, in, in, uh, in school. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he. <laughs> Uh, I won't sing it, uh, but he was probably a very wealthy individual. He was cheating people out of their money and pocketing that and all those things, and he kept it for himself. And so um, just as a way of review from what you guys uh, have learned in the scriptures, what, how did this affect Zacchaeus by Jesus just being with him and him just spending time with Jesus and becoming kind of immersed in who Christ was? How, how did it touch his life? Well, from the scripture, uh, basically Zacchaeus' response was he gave half of his possessions to the poor, and he paid back anyone that he had previously cheated four times the amount. Awesome. So, right. This would have been life changing um, for Zacchaeus and also for his family as well. Um, and, you know, also life changing for us, too, just to learn from his story. Yeah. Yeah. I, what I love about that is like, at least in the text, Jesus doesn't tell him to do this. Right. Like he just, again. So we're seeing this as as I abide with Christ, I should becoming a more I should become a more generous person. Um, and so the New Testament talks uh, a lot about giving. We Again, we don't want to read the whole Bible because we've been doing that the last few episodes. Um, and we do want to read it, but we just don't want to read it on the podcast. <laughs> um, but 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 are uh, good chapters to go into and kind of grab. But just some of the principles that are there just for our audience so they can be familiar is that we need a willingness to give. It shouldn't be something we do grudgingly uh, and kind of, you know, a closed hand versus open hand as we talked about. Um, we talk about God loves a cheerful giver and that giving should be without guilt, force, manipulation, or pressure. And we we actually talked in, the I think, our first episode on treasure about how sometimes that could be a challenge in a local church. There can be a little bit of pressure there, and, and we don't we don't want that. Um, and so let's look at another scripture. Uh, Carlton, you're going to read for me um, 1 Corinthians 16, 1 through 3. Certainly. Now about the collection for the Lord's people, do what I told the Galatian churches to do. On the first day of every week, each of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, saving it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. Then when I arrive, I will give letters of introduction to the men you approve and send them with your gift to Jerusalem. So just some things to think about there. Paul tells them, hey, do this on the first day of the week. So there's, there's an idea of consistency uh, kind of to it. Um, and he says, keep in, 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 keeping in with the sum of your income. So again, just as the Lord brings increase to us, we're giving that out. Um, and then set aside so when it's time to give, we have it. Um, and so like we do have to take time to think and plan through. So when the needs arise, we're, we're ready to rock and roll and, and go with that. A um, lot more scriptures we could jump into, but I think we're going to be best served the rest of our time talking some practical uh, things here today. Um, we talked a few episodes ago about how Giving in a church context could sometimes get a little little uneasy, right? Uh, we know in broad church history, there's been some misuses and, and things that have been shady, and we talked about that earlier. And so, Ken, as you're one of the members of our finance team here at Connect Church, 
how does Connect Church specifically safeguard this area so that people can know as they give that there's no impropriety happening? Yeah, I mean, basically, you know, from its startup, Connect Church has put in place a finance team of which I'm one of three members, um, basically to provide oversight, you know, the fi- of all the financial matters uh, to advise our uh, pastoral leadership on issues related to money um, that may arise and also to assist in the day-to-day operations. So um, this team of finance, uh, or finance team of, of three, basically the three of us compri- uh, comprised um you know, basically, we've got decades of ser- literally decades of service to the church. We've uh, in the areas of like church finances, budgeting, reporting, and operations. So, uh, we've got a good group that, and basically, and, and then basically, what we do each month uh, is we provide. You know, uh, we review the financial results of the month with our lead pastors. You know, just to make sure that there's everything staying on track, and that there's if there's any questions or issues that might be coming up in the future that we're aware of it, and we can plan for it. Awesome, fantastic. And so then, Carlton, what would you say maybe to someone that says maybe they come with the idea of, hey, the church is just out for my money. They they want, you know, they just want me to give. That's all they care about. Um, what are your thoughts? Um, well, my response to that would be um, stick around for a little while and mm-hmm. you'll see that that is not the case. You know, um, I've been fellowshipping here over a year and um, one of the first things that stood stood out to me um, was uh, that there wasn't such an emphasis on money. And that's just talking about um, Connect Church in general. But um, I would say stick around and see what's happening, see how the church is impacting and and outreaching to the community, Mm -hmm. how they're helping um, in local and, uh, uh, um, and foreign missions as well. Um, and things of that nature, but more importantly, just be watchful. You'll you'll be able to see where the money is going, good for good or for bad. True. Sure. So sure. yeah, good, awesome. So Ken, we'll come back to you. Um, someone gives to Connect Church. What what happens to that money? Where where, where does it go? Yeah, I mean, basically at Connect Church, you know, giving really falls into two uh, two bit two buckets. Um, general offerings are which basically go towards like the administrative expenses. Uh, ministry expenses, you know, equipment, supplies, basically things that keep the, uh, you know, the ministry going. The second category is what we call kingdom builders. Um, and basically money that's dedicated or designated for kingdom builders kind of goes towards supporting our local as well as our global missionaries and organizations um, like Rise in, in Heights Town that does a lot of good work, um, as well as for special projects. You know, you know, you know one example would be um, you know, disaster relief, you know, that, that occurs, um, it seems like every year now. Um, so those are, those are some of the th- some of the uses for the kingdom builder funds. Awesome. Awesome. So Carlton, we'll come back to you. Sure. Um, sometimes someone could say, Hey, listen, like I'm strapped financially right now. I can't afford to give. What would you say to, to that person? Well, I would say, first of all, God knows your heart, right? Mm-hmm. And God has everything. He doesn't need your money. Understand, I mentioned this early in an earlier episode that giving is not an issue of the wallet or the purse. It's an issue of the heart. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the Bible uh, and the Bible talks about a scripture verse where Jesus sat back and he watched as the people were giving. And, you know, people were giving these incredible sums of, of money and they were announcing it and blaring the horns and all of this stuff. And, and then um, a, a, a widow came and she just gave you know, a couple of cents that she had. Yeah. And Jesus stood back and said, out of everyone, this woman gave more, right, than they did. So the thing is, God knows your heart, right? And there are other ways of giving than just financial. If you if you cannot, mm-hmm. right, and he'll receive that as well. Sure. Um, but then he will then position you to where you can give. Sure, sure. Um, Good. And you will have the opportunity to respond that way as well. Awesome, awesome. So th- this question will kind of go to both you guys. Um, does giving equal getting? Like, if I give, does that mean like, all right, God's gonna God's gonna take care of everything for me? I'm not gonna have any problems. Like, I'll never have an issue. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I think giving equals obedience. Yeah. Um, I mean, we should, you know, you know, we we should still use the you know the giftings that God gives that God gives us, uh, the abilities that He gives us, the opportunities He gives us uh, to work hard and to use those you know, those giftings to, um, you know to support ourselves, support our families, uh, and to bless others. So, um, no, giving doesn't equal getting. I, I think it's, you know, again, it's God will provide us the opportunities to to be able to give back to him. Yeah, sure. 
So I'm going to answer that slightly different than Brother Ken. Um, I think that giving does equal getting, but not in the sense that they may be thinking. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, I believe, again, um, our willingness to be generous with what God has given us um, has a, a direct um, connection to our relationship with the Lord and where we stand. True. And so I believe when we do give, we get just not necessarily in, in the financial ways we sure. may be trying to sure. think of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I've heard someone say this phrase, which I always thought was good. We're not prosperity preachers, but we're provision preachers. Right. Like, like you know, it, there is something known as the prosperity gospel, so to speak, of like that we give and we get all these things, but though we do believe the Lord to provide for us, you know. right? And what we need. And that could take a million shapes and forms. And it might not always be financial. But yeah, as Ken was talking about, right? Like this should not absolve us of responsibility. Oh, I don't have to do nothing like that's got to take care of like we gotta be on those kinds of things. So great. Um, is it okay to give somewhere other than the local church? Or should your giving only be to your, to your local church, what would you guys say to that? Well, I, I think that it is okay to give um, um, outside of the local church in addition to giving to the lo your local home church as well. You know, um, uh, I enjoy whenever you and your wife invite us over to come and hang out, uh, but it would be out of order for me to just pay your rent and not pay mine, right? Mm -hmm. Not take care of the things that I have to take care of at home. Sure. So um, I think in addition, I think, yes, it's, you know, the Lord has blessed you and he's moved your heart in that way. Yes, it is okay to give outside, but I believe you also should be taking care of home as well. Sure. Well, as a member of the finance team, I, <laughs> I have a little slightly different twist on that. Uh, my opinion is if you are part of a local church, then your tithe should go to that local church. And then if you want to give offerings to other faith-based ministries, um, that's awesome. Yeah, sure. All right. Cool. Um, next one for you. A couple last one, and then we'll, we'll kind of wrap up today. Is money spent on enjoyment wrong? Because sometimes people could adopt that, that mentality uh, with talking about this topic. I don't think so. Um, I mean, God created beautiful places for us to go on vacation and to enjoy ourselves. I mean, I think the problem arises when our budgets get overloaded on the enjoyment mm -hmm. expense side then sure. uh, then then we need to be careful sure. sure i'm in total agreement with brother kevin awesome just gonna read a scripture on that first timothy 6 17 18 command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant or put their hope in wealth which is so uncertain but to put their hope in god who richly provides us everything for our enjoyment command them to do good to be rich in good deeds and to be generous and willing to share and so i, I we talked about the celebration tithe or the vacation tithe before right like it's good to enjoy but again keeping those things in check um just a few thoughts as we close out this series um, first let us become people that ask god for wisdom uh with our money uh, i heard someone say once that every seed has an assignment like a tomato seed has an assignment for it to be a tomato uh, watermelon seed and so forth and so what about us when we receive money? Like, what's the assignment for that? I imagine someone said, here's a thousand dollars today. I would guess that we all have a plan for it, right? For me, it would be a bunch of olives, cheese, peanut butter, like salami and probably ice cream. <laughs> Those are things that I want to spend my money on. But do I take the time to say, Lord, what do you want to do with this? Maybe it is for enjoyment. Lord, maybe the Lord's going to say, take that thousand and go do whatever. Or maybe the Lord's going to say, take that and help this area. Or maybe he's going to say, save it because the Lord knows the car's going to break down in three months and you're going to need it for that. Whatever the case may be, are we taking the time to ask the Lord, what do you want to do with what's coming in my life? Just like we talked about, we don't often ask that with our time. We don't often ask that with our talent. So we need to ask that question. Um, second, if we need help with finances, get help. I'll, I'll say to our, our audience as well, there's there's great resources out there uh, that we can help point you to. Uh, if you're part of our local church, there's people in our church that have wisdom in this area and would love to, to walk with you and help you. And so reach out if you need help. Um, and then third, take time today to think through all your stewardship, right? Our time, our talents, our treasures. How can we grow to be more generous in these areas? How can we be more open-handed? Um, and just a story before we close. Um, one time, I, this was several years ago, I, uh, my internet provider, uh, who will remain nameless, uh, was having uh, some issues day after day with, with the internet working. And I remember I had a call over and over and over again to customer service. And every time I called, they kept trying to sell me on something like another product. And I'm like, I need you to just fix what you have. So eventually, like after like the third or fourth day call, and I was like, I was like, I'm gonna pull the scriptures out here. So I was like, I was like, if you can't be faithful to keep my internet on, I can't give you more money to do nothing else. You know? <laughs> um, but there's this idea of faithfulness for us. As we're stewards, as we are open-handed with our time and our talents and our treasure, 
man, the Lord can entrust so much more. It's not to get so that we can have more for ourselves, but that the impact for the kingdom can be more. So if we can't be faithful with the very little, we can't, we can't expect the Lord to entrust more to us. So that being said, that puts a wrap on stewardship. Thank you guys for the five back to back to back to back to backs. Um, but our last question to get to know you a little better today is what is something you wish you learned earlier within your life? I'll, I'll go. I, I would say um, that um, I wish I would have learned earlier that um, we don't have uh, all the time in the world. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think I learned that uh, a little later in life. And so I probably missed out a, a lot on family. Um, so I wish I would have learned that earlier. Mm. Very good. Yeah, probably from the spiritual side since... I didn't get saved until I was an adult. I wish I would have learned about God's love earlier. Yeah, awesome. Those are some good things. Well, thank you so much, guys, for being with us. Audience, thank you. This will actually put a wrap on Season 2 and a wrap on the series. And so I would encourage you, uh, stop here. Go meet now with your disciple. Don't just text them this time. They have some questions for you. They're going to spend some time abiding with you as well as walking through gospel coaching. Um, and then you could come back. You could watch our capstone uh, for season uh, two, which will have Ken, and you'll hear a little bit from him in there, and then come back for season three as we jump into uh, the Holy Spirit. And so have a great day. Thank you so much for joining us.